All right, ready to get started here. Uh, I've got Scandinavian tubing, uh, large and small. First thing I'm going to do is melt a uh, 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 butt section onto this large tube. Hey, see, I've just melted a little lip there. Hey, and what I'll do is I will cut probably about an uh, inch and a half. With that inch and a half, I'll insert my small, and this is just to give it a, a nice small head when the fly is finished. Okay, so I'll put it in, squeeze it in probably about, about half an inch or so, and I'll leave another half an inch out front and cut the small tube. So you just made a little step tube there. Okay, I've just got the uh, step tube I made onto my mandrel. I'll secure it in to the vice adapter. Just by pinching it down a bit and snugging it in. Alright, I'm ready to go. I'm going to use uh, chartreuse thread here. First thing I'll do is just make some compression wraps just to make sure that small tube is secured to the large tube. Some guys will glue this in. Um, I've never found the need to. Okay, just a few wraps to really tighten that up. Alright, I'll bring the thread back. Uh, about halfway on the overall tube and we're gonna add some sparkle film I really like the sparkle film stuff it uh, comes in sheets and you can see one side is uh, very shiny that actually has the backing on it so there's actually a sticky backing and then the other side is kind of I don't know how well the camera's gonna show this but it, you know a, a kind of a nice looking sp sparkle to it I think it just adds a little bit to the body of the fly. So I'm going to cut a thin strip here. Usually I'll use an X-Acto knife and cut a nice even strip. But I can't seem to find my X-Acto knife right now. So I'll just use scissors. And you know, if, it's, if the strip's a little uneven too, it's not a big deal because um, you overlap the wraps anyway. All right, so I've got a thin strip here, and now, like I said, one side of this, um, you know, sometimes if you just slip your scissors in between, you can get it. So you can see I've got the film and the backing now. Now, the trick to adding this flexi film is to not pull all the backing off, or you just end up with a big sticky mess. Uh, I'm just going to taper the one edge of it and pull back the backing, and I'm going to tie it in. And now I'm going to wrap backwards, and as I wrap backwards, the backing of the film kind of comes off with the fly, or pardon me, with the wrap. And you're going to wrap back, try and get it as even as possible, making sure that that backing is still coming off as you go. And you're just slightly overlapping each wrap. Now with about um, about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to start turning and wrapping back the other way. Still making sure that that film's coming off, the backing. Like I said, if you pull if you pull the backing off right away and just have it all off, you know, feathers will stick to it, fur will stick to it. So it's better just to kind of go and unwrap it as you wrap the actual film around the tube. You want to get it nice and even. Now, the sticky backing, it sticks to the tube a little bit, but still, I mean, you're still just tying it on as well, too. So it's. It's just kind of like an insurance thing, I guess. You can see the backing comes right off. 
And you can just really secure it in there and trim the rest. So I don't know how well you can see that, but pretty even, pretty even wrap job. Okay, I'm going to go in now with a uh, grey goose feather. Uh, we use these for, uh, they make a nice spade feather, but uh, in this case it's just going to be an under, kind of an under hackle. So we're going to strip. If this is your feather here, we're going to strip the left hand side. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. I'll just get rid of the fuzzies too at the bottom. And you can see the color we have, I mean it's dyed yellow, but it's dyed yellow over gray. So you don't get a true bright yellow color, but we like the look of it. Okay, so I found the tip and I've just pulled everything back. Nice, nice long feather there. Tie it in by the tip. Okay, and at this point we're going to use a uh, yellow seals for dubbing. I'm going to put this stuff on pretty thick. Uh, you could use a dubbing loop if you want to. We just put it right onto the uh, right onto the thread. Okay, so we're just going to, uh, like any dubbing, just kind of make a ball and then wrap forward. And we'll just go a little bit past the uh, where the small line, the small tube and the large tube connect. You'll notice we don't usually wrap our dubbing really tight, especially with seals for I like it to kind of kind of poof out a little bit and you know the spark will really be seen. All right, we're gonna take the yellow gray goose and we're gonna wind it forward. And as you can see, this goose has been s slightly burnt. Uh, so the fibers, they'll mat together a little bit, but they come apart quite e easily as well, which is what we're looking for. Secure it all down and pull it all back. And you just pull some of the fibers apart. It's, you know, it's a fine line when you're burning goose feathers. If you burn too much, they become just a frazzled mess. If you don't burn quite enough, they still stick together a bit, the fibers. This guy. This feather probably could have used a little touch more burning. Okay. All right, there's the under hackle. Okay, we're gonna go in with some uh, gray goose now. This gray goose has been dyed a gold color. See, there's the pack of the extra large stuff. And we'll pick out one plume here. You can see this. This stuff is long, good eight or ten inches on this this plume. So we'll just trim the fuzziness away. In fact, I'll just cut the base of the feather too, just to get it smaller. I mean, you're never going to wrap that far up anyway on a fly like this. Just, it just gets a little thick at the base when you've got all this other stuff to work with. So we're gonna, finding the tip on this can be kind of challenging. I'm just going to go up as far as I can. And pull back. You can see this extra large gray hair and it gives you a lot to work with. Okay, tie this in by the tip again, just like we did with the goose. And we'll start wrapping. This is just tied on like a traditional hackle, just going to wrap it, you know, moving slightly forward with each wrap, kind of pulling back as you go.
and I'm not going to use the whole feather. You can see right now it looks like a kind of a tangled mess here. We'll pull everything back. You know what, I'm going to cut the tip out too because the tip's just kind of doesn't look quite right. Pull the whole thing back. Just kind of compress everything there. And you can see what the goose does too is the goose kind of holds up the, the more fine fibers of the gray heron. Okay. Alright, gonna go in with just a tiny little bit of flashaboo. Okay, it's a gold flashaboo. Maybe four or five strands. Just to give it a little bit of a zing. Alright, you have some really nice uh, black temple dog here. Uh, you could use fox too. Um, we like the temple dog just because it's a little softer. And we're going to cut off a good sized chunk. And I'm just going to pull it out with my feathers, or pardon me, with my fingers. And then pull out the base too. There's a little bit of under fur on this. Just wanted to get rid of that. I just kind of roll it in my fingers a little bit to get that teardrop shape. And I'll cut the base nice and square. I'm going to wrap it in. Just wet my fingers a little bit, kind of pull it back. And, you know, some of our feathers we go, pardon me, some of our flies we go a little thicker wing. I'm going to keep this one a little thinner. Alright, we're going to add some uh, from our Intruder Grizzly Saddle Hackle. Uh, you can see this one's already been cut. Uh, we love these feathers because uh, well, if you go, if you look at some of the full feathers there, you know, here's, here's just a natural one. They're almost 12 inches long. Okay, so what we do is instead of using wasting a feather, you can see this one's already been cut, the tip's already been used, but we find if you just trim it, you can use it again as a natural tip. Uh, like I said, it's not a it's not for a you know a number eighteen Adams or anything. It's just to kind of give the fly a little bit of a lateral line look. So we just cut it in at an angle. We're just gonna lay it on the side of the wing. On each side of course. Yeah, it looks kind of silly now, but you'll see uh, when we put the last part of the wing in, it, it kind of looks a little more uniform. Okay, so we've got one on both sides there. Alright, we're just about done here. Alright, we're going to add the last uh, part of the wing here. Uh, these are Indian Badger capes, and you know what, Indian Badger, or pardon me, Indian capes in general have come a long way over the years. They uh, they used to be pretty rough stuff. Uh, I'm sure most people remember using them when they were younger uh, as very economical hackles. Uh, they still are, but the quality has gotten way better. You can see this, this, uh, this one has, you know, a whole bunch of great looking plumes. Okay? This one's been slightly dyed a gold color. So what we'll do is we'll find we'll find two matching feathers. And we'll just measure them up. Okay. And we want it to go almost to the back of the temple dog. And we're just kind of using this as kind of like a veil. Uh, a veil on the wing just to kind of cover up the grizzly a little bit. And just give it a different look. Right, you can see there, it's just, just kind of folding in. 
on the sides of the wing. So you can still see the grizzly underneath, but it's more of almost a topping, I guess you could say, veil topping, whichever word you want to use. All right, last thing is to add the jungle cock. Um, just don't have to have jungle cock, of course. Um, a lot of times we use the bigger feathers, but for this one, we're gonna keep keep going with the smaller smaller look here. And again, I I think I always say, but jungle cock, I think majority of the time is more for the fisherman than the actual fish. Makes it makes it look a little more traditional. Um, if you've got it, use it. And I put them right on the sides here. Some, sometimes we'll, we'll uh, angle them up towards the wing a bit, but for this one we're going to go right on the side. Oh, don't like the way that's sticking. Okay. I still don't like the way that's sticking. There we go. All right, jungle conch on both sides. Got this gray, uh, this orange fluff from the heron hanging out. Hey, okay, just finish off the head, make it look nice and nice and even. You can see why I use the small Scandinavian junction tube in the front. It just gives you a smaller head. Brings everything together. Yeah, I'll just end this with a couple of half hitches. Um, the reason I ended with the half hitch is, you know, these flies, for the amount of work you put into them, I, on mine anyway, I, I epoxy the heads, so just a couple half hitches covered with epoxy makes it pretty much indestructible. Alright, there we go. All that's left to do is to, is to burn the front lip, so just cut, and melt it against the flame. And we'll epoxy these with the rest. And you can see you've just got kind of the the grizzly underneath. Gives it a nice little look there. Here's one we tied a while ago. A couple of weeks ago actually. And you can see on this one, a little bit different, but see you can see the difference. On this one, we we didn't put a small diameter head on it, so we ended up with a much bigger head on this. Okay. And there we go.